Greetings and hallucinations to all you folks out there. So I've got another game for you on the map, Crazy Rush. Now I did this one a little while back in one of the live casts. I figured I'd do one for a normal cast. It is a relatively short game, and that is because I had technical difficulties in the cast that I was going to do today, and I am so terribly sorry, guys. I had an epic Canis match, which I will recast probably for Saturday and get out to you guys but at this point in the day it is too late to try to do another 30 or 45 minute cast so here we go we're gonna do crazy rush this is basically controlled mayhem if there is such a thing um if you ever wanted an example of chaos theory here it is now i believe this is left versus right i'm gonna run through the teams real quick here and then we'll jump into it Takedo is Cyber, and then we've got Ithalus is Aeon. I am so retarded as Aeon as well, and Clinch is UEF. Then on the right hand side, we have HCH is UEF, the infamous Bloodier as UEF, Nexus of Reality is UEF, and Black Crow as UEF. I should stop saying UEF because everyone is UEF. Yes, except for three people. <laughs> Five out of eight. Either that is a heavy UEF preference. Or the random was not quite so random as it is normally made out to be. Now, Crazy Rush, as some of you guys have already seen, uh, after you build a mex, the four adjacent slots become mass extractor slots. And then when you build those, the adjacents become. So basically, by the end of the game, you end up with this huge field of infinite mass extractors, and whoever has the most build power wins, and I see a terrible, terrible thing about to happen. Ithilus and Takedo are going to double team Black Crow as his base is barely coming online. And this is where having an air scout would be a brilliant thing, because if you see the two ACUs coming, you can throw down some T1 point defense, and then you will probably be okay. But it is far too late for that. Black Crow has five mechs down, is building another mechs with his ACU. These two are already in attacking distance. He's going to move in to engage and then probably go LOL nope and pull directly back. Well, he's herding to Keto northwards. Ithalus is now within firing range, and good lord, the pings. Ah, the pings, my eyeballs hurt. So he's going to be moving back and trying to escape. But we have more factories going down from Takedo. He is going to bring his infamous Cyber and Mantis spam online. Possibly Medusas, who knows. They are equally good. And Black Crow is about to be in a world of hurt. He's already shed 3,000 health to these two ACUs. His base is being trampled by these guys and Nexus of Reality is going to be a good teammate and come up and try to assist. We got two versus one on Ithalus now. Takedo is going to try to move into attack range and Black Crow is throwing down a factory to disrupt the walking patterns. Ithalus is going to have to push back, I think. Yes, or northward, whichever, away from the ACUs that are attacking him. All the rest of these guys, pretty much normal stuff. Blood here throwing down some factories. We've got factories going down for HCH was actually kind of constricted his uh, build space here. You want to build those factories a little further away than that one right there is. Um, yeah, all these guys throwing down many, many factories. And this is kind of like the Dance of Death. You have four ACUs, two of whom are low enough that a double ACU blast would take them out. And Takedo and Nexus are above 75% health. So this is the point where you start worrying about, hey, this game might be a five minute game because we're about to have four ACUs go nuclear in the north side. And that can be bad for either or both teams, or it might not make any difference because if they lose four ACUs, well then it's still an even game. Looks like I'm so retarded is not so retarded because he is building a nice bit of factories all with the adjacency bonus on these T1 power generators. Now when you have this much available mass income, the amount of power that you have is actually the more critical resource even more so than when you're in a normal game. So this is going to be your ideal build. And then we have kind of the same thing going for Takedo, who has thrown down some P-Gens for his factory there. He's throwing down tons of factories in the north and lines of P-Gens up there. I wish that he had the adjacency going like um, Retarded is doing, because that would look so much better and it would please my OCD. 
Nexus of Reality is doing a very good job body blocking for his buddy here. Black Crow is still picking off some units. You need to be careful about your unit placement and firing patterns, though, because if you have like that, where ACUs walk in front of each other, you will actually take friendly fire, and that can be devastating when you have situations where, you know, one, two, three hundred HP is the difference between life and death, which is what typically happens when you have a two versus one situation. Ithlas has pulled back. The unit flow is strong, though. Factories everywhere. T1 units everywhere. And yeah, these guys are... Clinch is being a little bit more aggressive. I was about to say these guys on the south are kind of more static. HCH is throwing down a point defense, which is, again, blocking his uh, mass extractor availability there. And he is going to be able to deny that push from Clinch. So things have kind of sort of settled. Still a tiny bit of aggression on the north side from Takedo, but I think he has... Or these guys have somewhat resigned themselves. We got a movement of Mantis, though. You don't want to do what is about to happen. Because if, um, if Nexus of Reality pulls back inside his base, his factories are going to act like shields. It's basically HP heavy damage soakers for the rest of his units. It will block the firing pattern of the units from Takedo and allow an easy win for Nexus of Reality, but that's not going to happen. That engagement is going to be pushed back. Black Crow once again coming to the assistance of Nexus, and they are going to be able to push that ACU away from the base. Unfortunately, not enough. There is still this unclaimed territory up here, but when you have infinite mass extractors, it doesn't really make that much difference because uh, Black Crow was able to get a couple T1 engineers to the back here. He is building some mass extractors, even though that mass technically belongs to Nexus of Reality, but once they spread it out, if they can string it in the other direction, um, the Black Crow should be able to make a full recovery eco-wise. Well, the time is a factor, so it'll take him a little time to catch up, but he should be able to get back on par with everyone else. Nexus of Reality bringing his units up from the south. There are a lot of factories going down for all parties involved. Good lord, look at Retarded's unit count. He has got a whopping... Well, I can't see the count. Where are we at here? 22 land factories. Goodness. And he is going to be pushing units like a madman. Sometimes the sheer quantity of units is the deciding factor for how the game goes. And in a game like this, where it's this close, that may be the case. Black Crow is having to retreat. He's got 2,400 health on his commander. Nexus of Reality still playing the dance with Takedo, who has significantly more health. Overall, this is just like a shifty, liquid battlefield where everything is kind of going back and forth. We do have a T2 Engineer, Alpha Ithlis, which is going to be throwing down an Oblivion. Point defense creep is real on this map, and Black Crow is threatened with death. We've got lots and lots of Mantis moving down, which is a recipe for getting your feet tangled just like that and not being able to retreat, but the veterancy is kind to Black Crow. He is going to recover enough HP to survive that. Uh, 1,700, 1,500, 14. He is going down, but I think he will make it out. Yep, there we go. And Mantis moving in once again, but when you have two commanders in the same spot, it is very hard to gain an overwhelming advantage over that position. Just because two ACUs together is so strong when you couple in the overcharges. So we got T1 bombers harassing the mass extractors of HCH. That's an excellent strategy. Bombers also on Bloodier, but this is the better one, eliminating the power. Because mass comes online so easily for these positions, it is very hard to keep your power situation above water. So power is definitely the more critical target. Bloodier throwing down a T2 power generator to try to take the sting out of that attack. I'm sure he's going to be shielding that as soon as he possibly can. And then he will be golden. Got T1 bombers galore coming in from two different players for Bloodier. Again, laying down damage on the mass extractors. Yes, it's nice to kill mass extractors. It's so very satisfying, but overall, in the grand scheme of things, it's not the absolute best thing that you could be doing. 
We've got uh, HCH on the bottom end. He is throwing down triads left, right, and center. Mobile shielding moving to the front. Already got a stationary shield and plenty of T1 point defense sprinkled through. Always remember your T1 point defense because it is vital for keeping back that T1 spam off your T2 PD. And Nexus of Reality once again coming under fire from a veritable swarm of Mantis. Black Crow also providing support from the back end. It looks like he does have the gun upgrade. Just going to give him that little bit of extra range, which Nexus does not have. Black Crow, yes, does have the gun upgrade. So that's 200 damage per shot on the UEF ACU. And there we go. Get that speed cut back down. A couple of good overcharges to wipe out these clumps of units that are hanging out in different places. So Takedo, if these guys can tangle up his ACU with some of these T1 units, they very well could get a kill here if they're careful about it, but it looks like the units are too spread out. The ACU's not close enough. That is a shame. More Mantis streaming in. The biggest advantage I can see on the left-hand side is strictly the amount of production. The sheer force being brought to bear on these two ACUs is astounding. We've got Takedo. He has got 21 factories and then retarded has 30. All the rest of these guys pale in comparison to those two numbers. Nexus of Reality, who is trying to fight off two different people with his factories, only has 19 and a couple of T2s, and he's also made a fairly critical mistake here. He's got his T2 HQ on the front lines. This thing will go down in this game, I 100% guarantee it. You've got T2 point defense coming up within range, you've got T1 artillery all the way around, and you've got tactical missile launchers, more T1 bombers coming in for strikes on those mass extractors. Um, that is a bad idea. Should have upgraded one of these here in the back. And Bloodier is, as always, eco -boring. He's got 225 mass income. Only Nexus of Reality is coming remotely close to him. I'm so retarded is pulling 190. So a 40 lead over the highest person on the other team. Very nice numbers to be looking at. Hopefully he will be able to turn out a T4 at some point in the future. I know there's no T3 on the map yet, but that will be a good thing to see when we start seeing a fat boy hit the field. I know, I know there's other T4s, but when you have an entire team of UEF players, there's not much to choose from. Why did you all go UEF? That was a bad idea. You need a variety of tech to react to a variety of situations. Also, I wish that Ithilus was not playing defense creeping with an Aeon in the midst of a T1 unit battlefield. But hey, when you have this many T2 point defense and the accompanying T1 spam, then, well, I guess the Oblivion turrets actually do pretty well for themselves. T1 bombers coming in to rain down the fire and brimstone upon the heads of HZH's mass extractors. Again, with the aim for the power thing. I think that Clinch is the only one making that mistake. And he's a 1700 player. I would have thought uh, he would aim for a little more vital structures. I know mass is the tempting target because in most games, mass is the critical element. But in this, when you've got infinite mass extractors, yeah, not so much. So Nexus of Reality is hovering around half health, trying to defend his section of real estate. And we've got Black Crow throwing down an upgrade. Ah, attack launchers. I missed it. No. HCH is dead. By the way, I don't have the minimap because this um, crashed out pretty much immediately with both screens active. I don't know what it was about this map, but uh, yeah, I couldn't do the dual screen. But anyway, five tag launchers and HZH is dead. I cannot believe that. We've got a game where the average ranking is above 1400 and we still had a tag launcher kill. The cheese is real. Viper spam. Oh, no, those are flapjacks. Never mind. I was about to say Viper spam is real as well. The Vipers are decidedly overpowered on this map. Because if you get enough Vipers up, you can start chewing into their build power. And that is pretty much a situation that you can't recover from. Bladir is still on top with 201 eco. Or 201 mass income. That's not the sum total of his eco. But he does have a dearth of factories. We've got 17 to his name with no T2. Yeah, there's one T2. Okay, T2 
T2 and a support. And Bomber's coming in to wreck his mass extractors as well. See, the problem with this is no matter how many mass extractors you kill, not only do you have infinite spawn, but look at the reclaim. Just look at the reclaim. You can reclaim your way out of literally any situation when this is happening. You can spawn engineers with an attack order right there and you can reclaim like 3,000 mass within reach of the T1 engineer. So yeah, it, mass is not a problem. Bloodier just kind of chilling out in his shield construct with tons and tons of T2 power generators. Because apparently without T3, well, yeah, the T3 jump would bite too much into the unit count that's being fielded at the moment. Nexus of Reality, let's check on him. We've got 14 T2 factories, or T2 support factories, rather, and 13, so almost 30 factories, half of which are T2. Then if we go over here and check out, I am so retarded, we're still sitting on 29 factories over there. Takedo is also shifting some of his to T2, but still living with basically the same amount. And these guys, you can see we've got well-balanced ecos all the way around. Some of these guys nearly overflowing mass. There's a stall for Takedo. And yeah, most of these guys looking pretty good. This is still salvageable for the right-hand side. They are doing admirably well. Even Black Crow, he's back up to clearing 109 mass income, which is very good in this situation. And he is pushing a lot of factories. Just the unit count is so low for the right side. They're trying to make up for it with point defense and such things. But when you have literally hundreds of units crashing down upon you every second of the game, then point defense just have a hard time keeping up. You need the T1 point defense mixed in, and that is only a defensive line, and you have to be offensive. And this is a nice little roundabout by Clinch. He is going to bypass Blodier's main entrenched areas. He's going to cut around to the back end. These point defense over here are going to give him a little trouble. We got two right here, but there is a Harbinger pulling up from I'm So Retarded. And more on this side. And saying Retarded's name over and over again is kind of annoying. <laughs> Somebody's going to make a mix of, uh, or, or remix the whole I'm so retarded thing at some point. Someone should totally do that who has better audio skills than I do. Although that might be uh, too much. I don't know. Um, Hitless still pushing forward here with his commander. Maybe he's going to be building more T2 point defense. I'm not sure. And the trebuchets are real. He is pushing in with those artillery raining down on these factories, on the power generators, on the mass extractors, just devastating eco and build power alike. Do not want to lose either. Losing both is just horrendous. Black Crow taking fire directly with his ACU, but he does have that commander shield. It's a little low at the moment, but it is helping him out on his HP count. He's going to have to pull back, but he will live to fight another day. Lots of T2 tanks backing him up. He's got all T2 support factories, so good for him. And not really losing any of his mass extractors. But the brunt of the losses are being taken by Nexus of Reality, who is on the front line with his ACU as well, but he is unshielded, which could potentially cause some problems. We've got Percival's moving out on the south side from Clinch. Very nice unit choice on that. Not sure why we haven't seen more cheese from those launchers, other than the fact that there are a few TMD scattered around. But with five, you would think you could pick off a commander or some other vital target. Like an HQ, which is north of all the TMD. Well, no, there's one there. It would take out two of the missiles. A couple of launches would kill that. That would very... That would hurt Bloodier a lot. Probably the most critical target he has, and no, not Nexus! There is the overcharge from Ithalus, followed by a point defense hit, and that is the end of Nexus of Reality. I think that is the end of this game as well, because I don't see how they can recover from that. Good game all around in the madness that is Crazy Rush. I know this isn't a typical game, and it's definitely not one that I'm going to cast very often, but I do get a huge kick out of playing this occasionally. I actually played, haven't played it in quite a while. I need to pull this one back out and play it some. Um, but, uh, 
you can have a ton of fun on this game on this map with a group of friends playing together there's the desync but i don't think it really matters at this point because bloat ear has taken a bow there's the control k that's what desync game black crow moving in to meet his maker he is down to 1800 health and the shield is not yet regen so a couple of these missiles connect or some T1 units hit him, or artillery, either one. There's the artillery, and Cerberus turret looks like it's going to get the kill. And there he goes. If not that, there's Janus's. So, left-hand team wins. Well done to you guys. That is the E-Clan. We've got one BFA and three E's, so these guys are probably on voice chat. And, yes, all hail retarded, the mother of all production lines. <laughs> I think this is what won them the game. The mobility of all of these units. You got tons and tons of build power from Takedo and I'm So Retarded. And I think that is what did the right hand team in. That and that little double team on the north that denied them that fourth eco for just a little bit. Alrighty guys, that's going to wrap up this game. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And like I said, I will have... That other game up probably for the Saturday cast. Hopefully I can get it back in because it was a really good game. Don't want to miss out on that one. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys over there for that cast.